Well, hello. Hi. <laughs> it feels like it's been a very long process, but we're finally here. Yeah, it's Christmas. Yeah, I'm here with Grace Peacock, the Director of Communications at Canada's Wonderland, and they have finally announced their star attraction, Elpen Fury. All right, so it's, here. it's been a hard road, I bet, keeping this a secret. It feels like theme parks kind of struggle with that nowadays, but you guys have managed to keep probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen, a complete secret at Canada's Wonderland. How has that been? Yeah, it's obviously difficult. There's a lot of moving pieces, a lot of people involved, um, not only in the park, but like, you know, we have agencies we work with. Um, we decided this year we were going to keep everything under wraps, no embargoes, no nothing, like that's it. And um, yeah, it's it's great. I, I think it wouldn't have been the, the end of the world if anything had leaked out because I think it's great news no matter what, but uh, it's certainly fun to see people surprised yeah. and seeing all the activity on social is really fun right now too. Yeah, it's really blowing up. It's awesome to be honest. Um, so I'm going to ask you a few questions. Okay. So I'm going to ask you some questions about Alpen Fury and a lot of these might be a little enthusiast. So we'll see if you can answer any of them. Okay. My first question is, can you tell us anything about the queue line setup for Elp and Fury? She's right into the technical <laughs> stuff. Uh, it'll be over in Alpenfest. It'll be over in Alpenfest. <laughs> <laughs> the new area. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, another really good one is, will there be any fire and ice special effects? We saw that in the animation, a little fire puff. Um, is that actually going to be a thing? Yes, we're working on a fire element. Ice pieces uh, yet to be determined, but uh, the, the fire effect is there for a reason because we're hoping to have that off the top of the mountain when the coaster comes out. That's insane. Um, how long has this project been in the planning phase for? Oh my goodness, years, obviously. Um, the act of construction work, you know, only a number of months, but um, planning so much goes into that, right? Like we've got to consider you know, what demographic of guests are we going to tailor to? What are we not currently offering in the park that we could be doing? Um, what what footprint do we need to work with? And what is that going to require of attractions coming out like Skyflyer? Uh, what, you know, dealing with the utilities and the, the infrastructure that already exists in the park and having to work around that obviously impacts what we can put in, right? So. Um, during the bid process, you know, you get to work with all kinds of world-class manufacturers and the, seeing the proposals are all really interesting, which I can't all talk oh. about, but what's important <laughs> is the one that we ended up going with, right? That's true. Which obviously checked all the boxes and um, and that, yeah, so that process is, is years. That's awesome. Um, so another question we have is in the animation, we see a couple of different color schemes on the track and supports. So one animation, it's almost like a copper brown on all the supports, and then a blue track, and then in the other animation, it's like brown and elpin. Do you know the actual color scheme of the coaster? So the colors that are in the, the POV and the off-ride are the same, right? Yes. Go with that one. Okay. <laughs> we take some liberties with the cinematic trailer, of course. You know, like, obviously, you're not in, like, some snowy place. <laughs> but, so, yeah, with the colors, we take some liberties with as well. That's true. That's true. Um... When it comes to Elpen Fest, will there be any additional changes or theming to what we saw in the animations? So yes, we are planning to officially designate the area. I think the development of it um, will be a, a multi-year process. Um, the station is obviously going to be the biggest new thing that we got to focus on. And um, I know our creative services team does a great job uh, building in the storytelling aspect of that. I'm sure you've seen the story online about Alpen, uh, Alpen Fury. Um, the ice and the fire effects, um, the fact that there's a festival that this little village puts on. Um, the storytelling is so critical to everything we do from developing the teaser to developing the images and things. Um, it's great to have that as a backbone and that's going to serve as an inspiration for future theming there. Awesome. That sounds amazing. Um, so when choosing a project and developing a project, there's obviously key aspects that go into what a park's looking for. Are you able to touch on what the park might have been looking for with this attraction? We see that it's very inversion focused. Um, is that a part of, that was something the park was heavily looking for? I don't know that we specifically asked for this many inversions and it has to do all these things. 
I think we had a sort of a loose concept of what you know the area we had available to us, our budget, um, a, re a requirement that this needed to be a unique experience, and sometimes that's enough to inspire some of these ride manufacturers to put together a great package. Um, so I couldn't say that we specifically asked for those things, but it certainly checked the box for offering a unique ride that people can't get anywhere else. Awesome. I mean, it's mind-blowing what came out of it. Yeah. Um, you're going to skip this one. <laughs> Will the ride have comfort collars oh, uh, over the shoulder? No. No. Oh, okay. Wow. We would have had it in the animation. Oh, right awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's going to make everyone happy. There you go. <laughs> All right, so I've obviously given my opinion on Elpen Fury. It's an amazing ride. I'm blown away. It's shocked me. Um, what are some of your favorite things about this ride? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, the marketing team, you know, we get to work with a lot of people when we're developing um, these, these new attractions. And we've worked really closely with the creative services team. We have um, an experience and design team at corporate. Um, and we all sort of helped put this story together. And even though the story doesn't come through in all the teasing, um, you know, there's a, it's, it's referenced in a short little way on the website, I feel like that's really what brings these attractions to life for me. Um, it can't just be a coaster that has no backstory. Um, so even though it's exciting to see the inversions and um, to know that it's going to have, you know, the double launch and, um, I don't know, working on the story is, has been the, the best part for me. And coming up with the teaser campaign, our, our team put a great uh, effort into that to sort of try to drill down. You know, we, got, we know we need to work with fire and ice and the mountains, so how can we tease that out over a period of three weeks? Um, and we went really elemental with it, right? And, and had some fun. So <laughs> I enjoy that process. I think now things are gonna switch gears and I'm gonna love being able to tell the story, documenting the construction process. Um, and, and bringing people behind the scenes to see what goes into putting something like this into the park. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I'm so excited to watch this thing get built. I'm sure all of you are. Yeah. And yeah, obviously stay tuned to Canada's Wonderlands channels. That's where you'll get most of your accurate information on this project. Yeah, thanks Brendan. No problem. <laughs>